We want to continue breaking down the upcoming draft with the Saints with NOLA.com's Jeff Duncan, of course, the Times Speaker Union, also a contributor here all the time. Some would say too much <laughs> here on Fox 8. Jeff, thanks for being with us once again. Mickey Loomis had his usual poker face on today. We have c come to understand and just that he's not going to reveal much to us, but the guy always has a plan. No doubt about it, and I think today we got a little bit of insight into what might happen, at least in the first round with the New Orleans Saints. We know they are aggressive by nature. They like to trade up. I think it's been over 20 times they've done it during Mickey Loomis's tenure. And basically today, I think he was speaking to the rest of the league saying, hey, we're open for business. We're hearing a lot of reports, guys, around the league, people wanting to trade down in the first round. I think Mickey Loomis let those teams know they'll be in the market to trade up. Yeah, yeah I, look, he had his poker face on, but I, that, he revealed a lot in Very terms much. of uh, this formula Jeff Ireland likes to use. We'd never heard of that mm -hmm. before, and he thought how it's never steered them wrong. They've never gotten it wrong yet, and uh, talked about his philosophy of trading up versus trading down. He opened up about that. I mean, he was pretty open, at least in terms of a pre-draft press conference, in terms of their philosophy, what they like to do. And yes, of course, by this point, I mean, the work's been done. It's just that now the draft just has to happen. You execute the plan that you have in place. And the Saints have one. And again, I'm not sure if you guys feel this, but there's a comfort. There's, a, there's an ease, I guess you could say, in this organization. They feel really good about where they stand, both with free agency and the upcoming draft. Mickey did say the one thing that will never, ever change is they will go after the best player available on their board. And it seems like they've done enough in this offseason to say they can still take that same approach. Well, it's always been the kind of method of operation for the Saints. Use free agency to fill those glaring holes on the depth chart. That way you don't have to reach for a player on draft day. It allows you to take the best player on the board, be aggressive, move around. And Mickey Loomis said something today that I thought was very insightful. We have eight picks for now. Mm -hmm. And that means- At the I beginning think, of the presser, right yeah, away. Yeah, right away. He's letting the league know uh, give me a call. We'll be in the business. Yeah, look, I, I agree. I, I think they did a good job in free agency filling the big holes that they had on their roster, their must, so to speak. But there are some needs. And if you really look at this roster, it's not like 06 in terms of they have such a massive haul of people that need to get in to per perform right away. But they do have some, some issues when it comes to depth. And you look at the two deep. Um, so I, I do think there's a little bit of a balance there. But it's always going to be best player available because they trust their board that much, and that's what they're going to do. This next question would have been much more difficult to answer prior to the day, mm -hmm. but the chances of them trading up now, it seems like it's very high percentage. Yeah, I think it's close to 100%. <laughs> I mean, that's just the mm -hmm. way the Saints operate. The way the board stacks up for the New Orleans Saints is going to be different <coughs> from the way it stacks up for the other teams around the league. And when one of those guys they had graded very highly on their board drops, starts to drop down within range, they're going to make that move to go get him. They, it, Mickey said it today. When they fall in love with a player, it's wise to go get them. They feel like it's better to go get the guy that they want as opposed to waiting and having hopefully that guy comes to them. So I really feel like they're going to make that move. They're not going to have eight rookies make this roster. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're too deep right now. So use that as assets to kind of make a move. I would give it 85, 90, 95 percent chance okay. they move up and trade. And Mickey Loomis revealed something else, and it was uh, they have the assets to, assets to uh, bump up a few spots, but not the big jump. Like they tried, I guess, what, in 2018, we went from 27 <laughs> to like 13 or 14, where they had, went, four, four went the, fir the future first round pick. I think that's off the table. I think it's going to be a modest jump up. They're at 29, maybe bump up, flipping the third round pick to go up to about 20 or 21, or flipping the fourth round pick, go up to about 23 or 24. I think it's a strong chance they do it. A, they've always done it. And B, like you said, Jeff, a lot of teams are in the market are wanting to trade back. And the Saints may have a guy they like, they target. And go up again. It's the tiebreaker situation where best player available, but tie goes to the knee. Well, if you are trading up, you're kind of killing two birds with one stone there because you can dictate the terms, so to speak, if you see a player that's highly graded on your board and also fills a position of need. You know what the needs are on this team. First and foremost, that defensive line, it seems like it's the priority of this football team. So what players will be worth the decision to jump on up? Well, I think it's twofold there. One, is it a guy that fits the Saints' prototypes of size, speed, that fits into their offensive and defensive systems and then the other part of that equation is a playmaker i think a playmaker either in the front seven of the defense that could be a playmaking defensive end defensive tackle that uh, sean alluded to or even i think even a linebacker that can get after the quarterback and be used in blitz situations or any offensive perimeter player yeah. <laughs> that they believe can add some juice. I mean, this offense last year, I don't have to tell you all, mm -hmm. was boring, yeah. did not have explosive plays in their arsenal except for Rashid Shaheed. 
They need someone that's got a little juice there. I think that kind of playmaker you go get. I'll get specific. It's, it's two names, really, for me. If a guy like Lucas Van Ness, uh, the Iowa defensive end, slips out of the top 15, I think that's someone on the table they could that would fit their prototype, yep. fill a position <coughs> of need that they would go up and get, or Miles Murphy, the Clemson edge defender as well. Once again, fits their prototype, fills a position of need that that would be the type of player that they slipped out of the top 15. I think the phone starts ringing, and the Saints could potentially move up to get one of those two. But you're mentioning two defensive players, which is, again, it seems like that's where the focus really has to be yep. early in this draft.